Imagine a school just for wizards, where students gather every year to show off their mastery of magic. No, not that school. This school is called Raven's Realm Magic School. But like all the schools, the students here are major procrastinators. They've faced distractions and used up all of their potions. So not only are the wizards running late, but they're also totally unprepared with their empty potion bottles. Forget teleportation or time manipulation spells, the Raven's Realm students will use their magic to get all the way to Raven's Keep by moving the towers around and ideally bringing themselves closer as quickly as possible. Luckily for the wizards, they've discovered a way to capture the magical essence of their rivals in a bottle. Only the wizard who can fully prepare for their final exam and masterfully manipulate the wandering towers will come away as the winner. Hey everybody, my name is Spencer, and in this video, I'm going to break down the essential details of Wandering Towers from Capstone Games. That way, if one day you just happen to be browsing GameNerds.com and come across its listing, you'll be able to confidently say, Hey, this is a perfect game for me or my family, or my friend, whoever you may be shopping for. Or you might say, I don't know anyone who would like this game, including myself, but I don't think you will. Oh hey, we're giving away a copy of Wandering Towers to one lucky viewer. Stick around until the end of the video where I will tell you how to win. For now, let's wander on over and take a look at the game objective. To win this one to six player game, you must be the first player to move all of your wizards to Raven's Keep and refill all of your potions. It doesn't matter which order you complete these objectives in, but they both must be done. The number of wizards you need to get to Raven's Keep and number of bottles you need to fill is dependent on how many people are playing. In a three player game, for example, each player will have four wizards and five potions, while players in a six player game only need three wizards and four potions. You'll utilize movement cards to move wizards and towers, and cast magic spells to perform extra actions and abilities that would otherwise be against the rules. If you move a tower on top of one or more wizards, you trap their magical essence and use it to fill up a potion bottle. You can then spend these potions to cast any of the available spells chosen during game setup. Now don't worry, you don't have to refill spent potions, they still count towards your total. You can play with any combination of the eight magic spells included in the base game. Oh, side note, anyone who pre-orders Wandering Towers from Game Nerds will get two additional spells included in this mini spell expansion. Now here's a turn breakdown. Play two out of the three cards from your hand, execute the movements one at a time, and then draw back up to three cards. That's it! The cards instruct you to either move a tower or a wizard a certain number of spaces, always in a clockwise direction. Some cards will give you a choice between moving a wizard or tower. And while most cards have an exact value of spaces to move, some introduce a little bit of chaos by directing you to roll a die to determine the movement value. Now instead of playing two cards, you may choose to discard your entire hand to move any one tower one space. So you can begin to imagine the kinds of situations that will arise as players move wizards and towers. As towers move, they stack on top of each other, and there's no height limit. You could end up with a single tower nine stories tall. An added challenge is remembering where your wizards are when they get covered up. Now, before you can move them towards Raven's Keep, they have to be freed and you can't peek underneath the towers. So there's this cups-like element of keeping track of your wizards so you can free them up. If all of that wasn't exciting enough, here's one more twist. Anytime a player drops their wizard into Raven's Keep, it then moves to the next open shield space, whether that's on the board or another tower. So now, not only are there wizards and towers moving around, but the target begins to move too, which means that yes, your nine story tower can now become 10 stories. And this really keeps the gameplay dynamic as the board conditions are always changing. But if you're the kind of person who likes to have more control, you aren't completely at the mercy of your opponents. And this is where those spells come in. Some effects can add additional movement to any wizard or tower. There are spells that let you move pieces counterclockwise. And other effects include swapping, piggybacking, freeing a wizard, and even moving Raven's Keep, which normally cannot move unless a wizard is dropped into it. And since you can play with any combination of these spells, there's already a bit of variety just in this main mode of play. But the rulebook includes five variants. Solo without spells, solo with spells, cooperative, nasty variant, and team variant. Now each of these variants don't dramatically change the core rules, so they're pretty easy to implement. In fact, all five alternate rule sets fit onto two pages of the rulebook. 
Now, I don't think anyone will be buying this game for any one of these variants, but the fact that you can make this game work for a variety of groups with different gaming preferences is a pretty beneficial attribute. When I played my first game of Wandering Towers, I couldn't shake the feeling that it reminded me of a game called Escape from the Hidden Castle, also known as Midnight Party or Hugo. In that game, players move their guests around a circular path in a castle, trying to avoid being captured by the Phantom. I went to check, and sure enough, one of the designers of Wandering Towers, Wolfgang Kramer, designed Escape from the Hidden Castle all the way back in 1989. I was one year old. Now, that's not to say Wandering Towers is exactly the same. By adding decades of design experience and another powerhouse designer as his teammate, Michael Kiesling, designer of Azul, ever heard of it? This game is much more refined and adds quite a few strategic elements. Kiesling and Kramer are a dynamic duo of sorts. They've worked together on a number of titles, including Tikal, Cole Baron, Paris, Renature, and Savannah Park. If you've played any of those games, you should have a sense of how these guys work together. They're not going to be exactly the same, but they're all mostly in that lighter to mid-weight complexity category. Beep boop, boop, beep beep boop, boop. Hey, if you're watching this video and the giveaway is still live, here's your chance to get a bonus entry. Simply enter the phrase Raven's Keep in the designated box and you'll add three additional entries to the contest. Back to the video. This brings us to the target audience. Who is Wandering Towers for? The box lists the age range as 10 and up, but younger kids can definitely play this with no problems. I played it with my daughters who are 7 and 10 and they had a blast. They giggled as they covered up each other's wizards and made fun of me when I couldn't remember where my wizards were. Goodness. What kind of gamers am I raising? But they picked up the rules just fine. Now granted, they have been playing games for a while now, but really, you can teach this game pretty quickly. Just say, hey, play two cards, see what they do, and players will catch on. Even Joey over here could play it. Hey! Now the only tricky thing is the memory aspect. Some people will just laugh when they can't figure out where their wizards are, but if you don't pay attention and begin to have no clue where they are, your turns can become frustrating. You'll end up spending your turns moving towers around until you find them. Of course, you could also take this opportunity to trap other wizards and make progress that way, but still, you see how some people may have an issue with that. There is a slight hint of the take that style game here. You can intentionally trap your opponents to thwart their progress, even if it doesn't directly benefit you. If you know your opponent will make it to Raven's Keep on their next turn, you can simply move the tower they are on just out of spite. Now, I see these things as playing strategically, but if you or the people you play games with are prone to taking things personally, that's a potential issue. Finally, before I wrap this video up, I wanna break down the estimated time investment for Wandering Towers. You can expect to spend about two and a half to three minutes setting up the game, four to five minutes for a first time rules explanation, and about 30 seconds per player turn. A full game duration for three players is pretty close to the time printed on the box at 30 minutes. For a six player game, you're probably looking at 45 minutes. Now remember, the more players there are, the fewer wizards to score and potions to fill. Whatever the case, you can expect to spend under an hour of your time to set up, teach, play, and put away Wandering Towers. All right, while this isn't a review, I do think Wandering Towers will appeal to quite a wide audience. It's easy to teach, fun to play, and has a great strategy to chaos ratio. Plus, with the multiple methods of varying up the gameplay, whether through using different spells or the alternate play modes, I can see this being a board game collection staple for many gamers. If this sounds like a perfect match for you or someone you know and or love, you can find it over at GameNerds.com. Oh, and don't forget, at the time of this video's publication, the game is still up for pre-order, and if you pre-order from us, you get this bonus mini spell expansion. And now we've come to the giveaway details. To enter to win a free copy of Wandering Towers, simply click the link in the description of this video. Now, there are multiple ways to gain entries, including the secret phase that I shared somewhere in the middle of this video. We'll draw a winner in two weeks and contact them very shortly after. If you found this video helpful in making a purchasing decision, please give it a like. Also, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions about Wandering Towers, board games, or my beard care routine. And hey, subscribe to the channel for more tabletop gaming content like this, or this guy down here. Once again, my name is Spencer, and I want to thank you so much for watching this video.